Hey, hey, Crips here, and um, yeah, thanks for joining me. <laughs> I just I just never know how to begin anymore. All right, so what am I doing? Well, okay, I've got a video clip here of me traveling down the road. I've got an action camera mounted to the helmet, and everything is hunky-dory. Now, one of the things that I don't, wanna, don't like is in this video clip, my sky is just bleached out. It's almost gray, so that's uh, quite annoying. If I add a filter, it will then affect the entire film clip. So I need to find a mask and just isolate an area. So how do I do that? Okay, not a problem. I'm going to use the Color Fast, the new blue Color Fast. And I'm just going to drop that onto my timeline. And then I'm going to double click and launch into the interface like so. All right, first thing I need to do, I need to bring this uh, CTI, the current time indicator, by default is always in the middle. I need to bring that right to the end. So I can just simply just move this along to the end. Or I can use these things up here. Basically, it just says go to the next keyframe to your left or go to the next keyframe to your right. So I could have just done that. All right, so what I'm going to need to do is create a mask just for the sky. So here we have show mask. Scroll down to show mask or sorry, shape mask. And this gives me the shape. Okay. These are adjustment notes, so this is how I'm going to reshape my mask. Now, this is my curves. As you can see, it's oblong, and I want it more of a square look, so I'm going to drop this curve all the way down until it's a square. The feather I'm going to leave because I want it to blend in. If I drop that feather all the way down to zero, I'm going to get really hard edges, and then when I apply that, it's going to be too obvious, okay? So I'm going to leave the feather slightly higher, so it blends in with the rest of the photo. All right, so now that I have my mask, I just need to use the adjustment notes to reshape the mask. And after all, this is a shape mask. So let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, as you can see, it kind of spills over into the buildings or the trees, but that's okay because the feather, that's what the idea of the feather is. It just blends in naturally. All right, now... Uh, in order to apply the different levels and saturations, I need to then turn off the mask. But if I turn off the mask, then I no longer have a mask. Ooh. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to enable the mask. So yes, I want the mask there, but I don't want to see it. So I don't need to show the mask anymore, so I'm going to turn it off. None. So all I'm doing is just turning the visibility on or off. So the mask is still definitely there. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, as you can see, it's bleached out. So I'm going to drop the levels all the way down. And there you go, instantly brought out the blues more, and I might bring the saturation right up. Look at that, big difference. So the white really is white now and fluffy, and the blue is definitely deeper and richer. Now, because it's on the first keyframe, I can do Control-C. That copies all the commands here, and I'm going to bring it all the way to the end keyframe and Control-V. So now I've applied the same commands from the first keyframe onto the last keyframe, and I press OK. And then let's go right to the beginning of my footage. And definitely you can see a huge difference. So here it is much deeper. And I'll turn off the color filter just by toggling the eye on or off. You can definitely really now see the difference that the mask has enabled to do. So it's nice and deep. Now, obviously, if you're going to use a, a video of where you're constantly panning 180 degrees or 360, you're going to find a little bit tricky. So I'm trying to use a video that's a little bit more static. But if I was to travel on a timeline, like so, as you see here, the sky really opened up because there's no more trees. Over here, I'm back into more of the bleached look. So what I need to do is simply add a keyframe there and make the adjustments. So go along your timeline and then just make little adjustments as you go. It's a little bit tedious sometimes, but trust me, the effect is worth it. And so let's look here. So it's roughly about here, okay? So again, I do control V because I've still got the commands from the last copy and paste. All I need to do, do, oh my God, the Australian's coming out of me. All I need to do is just make uh, adjustments on the shape mask. So I need to move this over slightly. And I'm pretty happy with that. And again, I'll just turn off 
showing the shape mark so the visibility is on or off and again I'll just press OK and this is how I go along my timeline I just make minor adjustments as the as my footage plays along the timeline but I'm pretty happy with that so the blue is definitely covering the sky and the entire length of the video clip so there you go my friends by using the simple mask from Colorfast you can isolate certain colors um, I've even had one where I turned everything gray and then added the rain effect and everybody thought it was raining so if you need to get away with something like oh I'm late because it was raining uh, you can do it that way <laughs> trick the audience so there you go my friends as always thanks for watching